Hi friends, my name is Borrodante. Let's over pain again. It would be weird to start every next episode of over pain or anything with the addition of again. So today's patient is Sky 13th. Right, it's right there. Sky 13th. And this piece, I intentionally did not ask what's going on. My first thought was that the vegetables are coming out of the ground and harassing the tree, but I'm not sure that they're actually evil. It's just like a party or something like that. But the tree is kind of sad about it. I guess it's working early in the morning tomorrow, so it would rather be sleeping. Anyway, what I wanted to do here is to make this image more three-dimensional. So we're kind of going to rebuild everything. I'm not gonna be going into details very much, but this is like the biggest thing that I can tell about this image right now is that it's very flat. It looks like an arcade video game. So let's turn the camera in the interesting angle. Now, how do we do that while having this in the view? I guess we can go sort of like this. So this problem is very common and it's really hard. Like you probably know what you have to do, like build up the geometry with vanishing point and all that. But I understand that it's really hard to make that and at the same time think about the what you actually want to see because you don't know yet. And it's a lot easier to think things through in this flat composition, which is actually a good strategy but you shouldn't stop here. After defining the concept of the scene, now we can start over and make the proper angle and know exactly what we want to see at that angle. So let's do that. I'm gonna fail myself because it's been a while since I painted anything. So let's give it a go. I'm not gonna be using Nizumi just because not everyone can or something. Let's do it the true way. Now, I want to look at this part, like the camera will be pointing here, from somewhere on top, from the top like this. So this will be at the left side of the image, and maybe we'll put this one to the right somewhere, so it'll look better. Let's see, let's build the grid so we would make sure that we won't forget where the camera is and how the angle goes. And on top of the grid, it's usually a lot easier to build up things of any source of complexity. Now, are we gonna see the horizon? Or should we go more of a... I guess we can make like a hill. It's always a good rule to go with one-third for anything, really. When there's a high contrast division in the image, go with the third. So in this case, one third is the sky, and the vanishing point is gonna be probably somewhere out of the image. So let's go like this. There we go. Right away we know where we are. Before that, it was a terrifying blank white space. Now let's position some stuff. So the tree, since on the right there will be only this one little guy. Is this a mushroom? They're all vegetables. I'm not sure who's who in this area right here. But these are some sort of... No, I'm not even gonna try. I don't know the names all that well. Yeah, yet another guideline we really need is for vertical things. So, in the middle of the image is gonna be almost vertical, but not completely. We have to make sure that there will be the feeling that we're looking from the top to the bottom. Even though it might be not the best strategy considering we might wanna make the tree look big, but it really doesn't give me the expression that it should feel big. Like even the story-wise, this is like some fable fantasy kind of world. Again, with a hint of arcade video game, but that's mostly due to the angle, I guess. But not only. These guys, they look like some characters from Mario. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they, these are actual characters from somewhere. But I don't know this new stuff that kids watch. So this is the middle, so it's gonna be perfectly vertical. Well, there we go, these are the guidelines. And now let's do some positioning. Nice messy brush. Okay, so since this little guy is gonna be, well, kind of like here, I think we should like break the edges of the composition, break the edges of the image, so it wouldn't feel like these guys are everything that's going on in this universe. 
so some of them will be getting out of the edge of the image. And the tree is going to be on the right third area, somewhere right here. Okay, I'm gonna put this one even closer, or let's just make it smaller, because it's kind of huge considering that there's gonna be a tree as well, and it has to be really a lot bigger. Let's make it a little bit of a mushroom then. Such cool, nice shapes, the style of cozy little creatures. I don't know what it's about, but it's a thing. It's well put here. Now, the tree. So it's very wide and very short, like the area where there are no branches. It's literally just enough for the face, and then we have a lot of branches. And with this whole organic stuff, we don't really have to build up much, but if it helps, we have to think with the cylinder here, just to rotate the face a little bit like this. But very little, because it's really close to the horizon. Okay, we'll see where this will go a bit later. But now the roots. Thing about roots, they should go kind of like inside of the ground, you know. <laughs> I mean, we can see almost like the tips of most of them. Because it's kind of really hard to think about like, what do these roots actually look like when they get into the ground? It's gonna look kind of lame, right? Well, we'll think about that. They should kind of like drown, close to what they would look like if they would go inside of the water. But it shouldn't have such a sharp edge, of course. And for that, we're gonna use just a bunch of dust, dry soil, stones, leaves, grass. All that will make a nice transition. I'm adding extra silhouettes next to the main silhouette of the tree, because that's where a lot of uneven lines on the surface will show up as extra tiny silhouettes, so it kind of makes it look more three-dimensional and detailed. I mentioned it a couple of episodes ago, actually, this trick with the extra silhouettes. All right, that's good enough. Let's uh, mark in the face. I don't know, should it face directly at us? Well, the mushroom is gonna look in this direction, like a bit to the left, or a lot to the left, but not completely to the left. And the tree, well, I don't, don't really want it to face perfectly at us. Let's go like this. Why are you so sad, tree? Look at these amazing HDR effects on your everything. By the way, I thought about that, but I'm not sure, like, it's not necessary, but it looks like it could have been painted in 32-bit mode. Was it? Was it not? Because... I mean, it looks like a lot of this HDR effect is like it's a 32-bit mode thing. Or just painting in add mode on top. No, there's a thing that it has a very wide area between eyes. Let's do that. And also very heavy eyebrows. Wow, you are so clinically depressed. And the gigantic nose. Maybe that's why you're so sad. You saw your reflection in the lake. Not questioning how you got to the lake, but the trip turned out to have a very sad ending. Okay, there's a spiral on the nose. I'm not sure how the logic of this particular spiral would work in three dimensions, but it has really cool angles. I should follow those. Okay, that's good enough for now. Let's add the whole party. Okay. Let's see, there will be one dude. And this is something that's really interesting to keep in mind when you're building up at this kind of angle. The closer it gets to the camera, the more we're looking from the top onto the ground. And that's why the circle will be a lot closer to the circle when it's so close over here. But far away, it would be like this already, a lot more flat because when it's closer to the horizon, it's closer to a line. And following this kind of transition, you will really get a really nice, impressive 3D effect. Anyway, there's... Um, let's think about the composition. I think another one should be here. He is slightly bigger, but further away. I'm just thinking about the holes they are making in the ground, just to position them on the ground. Now there's this blue guy standing around there. Now he has some curves. And whatever the hell this is. 
He's like a bush or a tree of some sort. And let's make him face almost front, but a little bit to the right. When we're going like completely three-dimensional, always avoid completely perfect angles like this or this. This is gonna look, you know, lame. And like why you can make it right at any angle at this point. Okay, now there's a giant party. I think let's break it from this giant pile. If only I could understand what these guys are. But there are like different <laughs> vegetables basically, I guess. So let's start with just uh, these kind of spheres to position them. One of them will be here, the other one will be overlapped by the mushroom at the top, at the bottom. And overlapping is also pretty important to show the three-dimensional effect. This is the solid way to show that something is in front of something else. And there's someone on there. I'm almost like not even thinking about the geometry right now, because thanks to the grid, my eyes don't need the reminder. I'm like working on this surface, I can easily imagine it at all times. So, couple of these. We should give some kind of free space in here to give the eye a little bit of a rest. Maybe there's another tree somewhere out there, and maybe like a hill. All right, so this little guy, he looks almost like a tiny duck and he's going to be facing downwards because at this point, as I said, we're almost looking at the ground from the top. So, some kind of leaves and eyes. And I'm trying to follow the, the cylinder effect everywhere because there's no horizontal lines anymore at this angle. This guy is very happy to get out. I guess it's been a long winter for his family. Also, he has a very fashionable hairstyle. This is one of the most impressive things to do when the composition is complex and there's a lot of characters. Put one of them at this kind of angle. It's always so cool. That's the moment when the viewer will think, wow, this guy can draw characters from any angle. How cool is he or she? So we can see the top of the head of this guy because he is more facing away than facing us. And then there's a white belly. It's like a fusion of vegetable and an animal. Okay, let's make this almost a tree guy a bit bigger. Should make the eyes lower comparing to the nose like this. So they look like, Ugh. they all have this expression of Ugh, like such a heavy morning kind of face. Except for this little creep. Increasing the feeling of the geometry by showing the direction of the grass that is changing dramatically close to the camera. Okay, now with this thing, there's some kind of cauliflower right there. Let's make that one a U. Okay, it look like a giant raspberry now. Some kind of clouds as well. Always should put like flat, flat horizontal clouds next to the horizon and make them more fluffy and big as they go higher. Because again, the closer it's to the camera, the more we'll look at it from the bottom to the top. So right here there will be one big cloud like this and in there they're tiny like that. And in the middle there's something in the middle. Now, what if we turn off the grid? Okay, it all makes sense. It's lacking some detail in here, because the further we go away from the camera, the smaller everything gets, and that means the more objects should fit into tiny place in the composition. Otherwise, it feels unexplainably empty. Okay, so what about you? Let's merge a lot of the layers. You will be like a giant spiral thing. Uzumaki. Also, let's do the face for this guy. And I'm not sure if that's a thing in this universe, but I want to add some kind of antennas. <laughs> or like the leaves, but I guess leaves should grow from one point. It's gonna be a weird vegetable. 
Also, let's add the nose to this guy. One of the sections will be bigger and red, and there are like eyes right there. Now, mushroom. Are you a mushroom at all? You look like a tiny tree as well. Well, you're not big enough to be the tree. You're just a mushroom yet. That's the way these species grow up. And cool, stylized, stylized, stylized soil effect like that with spheres. Now the eyes, one in here, another one in there. So if many of them, or maybe all of them, came out of the ground, let's add, let's use this free space to add another hole that some of them came out of. So it's this kind of circle. All right. Now I'm really confused. Some of them turned out to be beaks, like the bird kind of mouth, and some of them have it as a nose. So this one is supposed to be a nose for sure. But in general, this creature looks kind of like a bird. In my composition, I mean. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are none of the above, but still, there's probably supposed to be a feeling of some sort of reference. Overlapping. All right. Hmm. There's some cool hairstyle on the mushroom. Let's do that. Also, there's a bunch of flowers. So I'm thinking with spheres on the spheres. It's easier to position things this way. Cool. Now, I think I've basically showed everything I wanted to show about this. Now let's render it a bit. Let's start uh, from far to near, far to close. So in the beginning there's sky. It should be rather bright. Now for the grass, when it's far away it should be a little bit fogged out by the sky color. And as it gets closer, let's actually go with the warm grass color, like it's lit by a warm sunlight, so it's gonna be warm. And, well, that's exactly what we have in the original. Nice warm mood. But now we got a lot brighter than the fogged out grass. That's not right. Let's do it again with the fogginess, kind of like that. There we go. This feels a lot more appropriate to the foggy effect. Oh, we can actually use this cold green color for the shadow, so a bit darker. The sun is, of course, from the top left corner. Now let's smooth out the transition of the fogginess. I'm just dropping the spots right now. I don't know where it's going. I'm just rolling the dice. Now let's do some soil spots where the creatures come out. I think everything should be rather bright, right? Shouldn't go like realistic dark soil. The tree, let's make it a bit brighter than the ground. Now let's make the tree in a separate layer, same as all the other characters, with all the other characters. Now let's think about the shadow color of the tree, and then the same thing for the ground and the leaves. So for each color I get darker, a little bit paler, and cooler, like close to the blue, closer, but a little bit, and we get this shadow from the sun. Now for the soil, same thing. Some more of a high contrast shadows to improve the feeling of the volume and just, you know, keep doing things. <laughs> yeah, after we went into the cooler color when we removed the sunlight, after that we can just go darker like this, and we should, because there is not gonna be even less of a sunlight, it's going to be less of a skylight now. So we just darken things, inside of the shadow I mean. There's the tree in the distance. Let's find its colors. I kind of like that. Now let's drop the spots for all the tiny creatures 
and let's start with the blue guy. He has really cool blue, like slightly sea color. Now let's do a cool effect. Let's do the reflected light. So we have this cold color of the leaves at the bottom of the spheres. But at the bottom of the composition, there's very bright grass and it will reflect some of this stuff. All right, let's add the red guy at the left. Cool, good one. Now for the little green one. Some highlights will make a good addition to the three-dimensional effect. Now for the yellow raspberry. Adding some details, we're basically done with all the build-up, more or less. Ah, there's some kind of leafy hair around this one as well, on the face. So these spiral things are kind of like bent cylinders, that's why the highlights on them will be lines. Same as here, although tree shouldn't really have much of the highlights. And see how we covered the roots basically with everything. So we didn't really even have to deal with them. So I'm adding some rim reflections of the sky, like this one, here and there. Somewhere it works, somewhere it doesn't really work out. That's because not everywhere the angle can justify the presence of this kind of reflection. Still worth a try. Pretty effect. Oh, I love this moment when you add deep shadows here and there and the volume, the three-dimensional effect really starts to work out well, like with these fruits. Man, the eyebrows on the original tree are so sad. It's like crazy sad, like physically painful sad, it's distorting the face. Now let's add the glowing things, whatever they are, in add mode, and it's like green and yellow glow. Let's see. Let's add them here and there, just flying around glowing like fireflies or something like that. Okay. Hmm. Okay, done. I think it feels like these are the same characters, right? Yeah. You tell me what you think and you tell me if I explained it clearly enough about the three dimensions and stuff because that was basically the point of today's video. But these are some fun characters. They kinda remind me of Pokemons a bit. <laughs> well anyway, thank you sky 13 for your submission. That was quite an interesting experiment. I never worked in this kind of style. And it was fun much. So yeah, this is it. I hope to make these a lot more frequently in the next week and further on. So keep the submissions coming, I will be checking them out and paying over them. And for now, I thank you for watching if you did, I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, talk to vegetables, do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! Why are you so sad? I got a big nose. Me too, mate. Me too. Let's be sad together.